Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call this committee meeting, Council of Bones Valley to order. Uh, any additions to the agenda? No, so I, have. I, I just want to update on um, four events mm -hmm. that are imminent under new and unfinished. I'll do them all together. Okay, yeah. four events? Yeah. Then uh, there was one closed session item. Uh, yeah, yeah. session item. Yeah, for identifiable individual. Yeah. Or is it employee negotiations? Mm -hmm. Employee negotiations. Okay. I imagine everyone has read the agenda. Anyone have any pecuniary interest? Seeing none. No. Okay. Adoption of the minutes of the uh, previous meeting. Yeah, I'll move those, Mer. John. I'll uh, I'll move the uh, confirm the agenda to Mer. Confirm the agenda. Yeah. yeah perfect. Agenda. Okay. <clears throat> Delegations. Well, welcome all. <laughs> <laughs> A community champion is able and willing to collaborate with a variety of partners and has a passion for creating wellness opportunities in their community. That is the perfect description of Lynn Epps. Lynn, Lynn, would you kindly come and join us at the council table? <laughs> You're really talking about us. Really? Yes, I do. So John does not <laughs> talk in his sleep that almost to that um that would have been a disaster. Yeah. Lynn generously devotes her time to making our township a better place through her primary collaborations with food producers and musical performers. Lynn enriches our community through music by offering her home for professional performances, and each event is catered by local homegrown foods. All net profits are donated to one of our local groups, such as the Bonisher Union Public Library and the Food Bank. A few years ago, Lynn started her involvement with the Ottawa Valley Co-op <laughs> to support local food growers and bakers by creating an outlet for their products. The OVFC has grown to be able to offer an online purchasing cycle to members once a month. All volunteer run, the OVFC now has a permanent location in the village arranged by Lynn where volunteers receive and sort the goods once a month for pickup by the members who order. Lynn has also been a member of the Eganville and Area Horticultural Society, which is the ruse that we brought you here under. <laughs> And thank you all of you for coming for a number of years and is a valuable member of its speakers committee and the membership club committee. Her extensive network of contacts has led to some high caliber speakers, and she has contributed ideas for relevant issues of current concern. She has actively contributed to society events by helping at plant sales, book sales, and the annual harvest auction. Last year, she accepted a position on the board of directors, helping to further the work of the EAHS. Having a greenhouse at her home, Lynn has shared her passion of growing food by starting many varieties of tomatoes in early spring. At the EA, EAHS May plant sale, she donated her seedlings and volunteered at the sale while the EAHS gleans the monetary support. During COVID-19 restrictions, she grew the plants, reached out to individuals to purchase from her and delivered the plants to locals. All the proceeds were donated to the Horticultural Society to help with fundraising in that difficult time. She is also a member of the Bonisher Union Public Library cookie bakers, who each provide a batch of cookies every eight weeks for an ongoing fundraiser that offers cookies for sale to patrons. She has supported other library events with baked goods, like the recent spring tea. She has also donated some valuable health-related books to the Boople Collection. She has provided support to the community gardens at Boople by offering plants and advice to the coordinator, which I will take you outside and talk to you about later for my home. Uh, <laughs> nominated by Heather Park Wheeler and with additional input by Judy Sobe, it is my honor on behalf of council, staff, and our community to present Lynn Epps with the Senior of the Year Award 
This award honors individuals across the province of Ontario for their exceptional efforts and outstanding contributions to the well being of their communities. Congratulations, Lynn. He's one of my favorite ministers, Raymond Show. Great guy. Your husband wants a photo. Sorry. Go eat the goods. And one, two, three, that should do it. Like it pronounces. May may I humbly add that the uh, the writer forgot her involvement with Meals on Wheels too, eating hungry. Oh, I'm Peter. Peter. <laughs> Can I add one too? Sure. Lynn is the driver of this Art in the <laughs> Afternoon event taking place July 1st. So if you haven't got your ticket yet, it's a very worthy cause. We're sure. recording our little artisans. $30 a ticket. Peter is not here. They're going to get a shadow on that from the light. We, uh, we could have been here all afternoon. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I will say, Kevin Smith recused himself when we were going over nominees. So we shouldn't have told him, period. I'd like to know if you're old enough to receive a senior here. <laughs> Sincere congratulations. Yeah. And thank you all for coming. Our meeting will only be three to four hours. Get coming. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of Yes, 20 in September, and I'll take you through how to be that's a venue talk. Okay, we still have to Thank you. Oh, all right. Um, we're, we're, Kevin's here. We're a little early, but Kevin's here. He is. Sorry, can I add one more thing to the agenda? I just, is that okay? It's about the Sebastian Bowl um, Museum. Sebastian Bowl. A stopping place. Do you want to talk about with your museum board tomorrow? Okay. And then add it to the okay, next one. I just talked about Yep. That's just fine. in case. Yep. That's okay. okay. Yep. Let it be ratified. Yep. Okay. Okay, Ken. Come on. Give me some good news, Kevin. Where are the feet? Well, they are shipped. They are shipped. They are They're shipped. coming from the States. Play center? Yeah. yeah. I just I just touched base with them before I came over and uh, I have an acetone. So that's good. So we don't have to send Emma to eight miles to pick them up. That's, I hope not. <laughs> like the floor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh good afternoon everyone. Um the arena, uh the uh, junior B team is uh no longer with us, so I know not we can do about it. Uh, but anyway, it was great to have them. We did, but uh, it was an opportunity for us, and uh, it just didn't work out. So 
That's all we can do. Yeah, that's all we can do. Uh, the Eagles Nest, we have bookings, so it's uh, against how we can stag in those, not the last little bit, so uh, it's good. Um, Rotary Beach feels ordered, so and the Rotary Club is looking after this field. Um, <clears throat> Centennial Park, uh, this the benches will be out, <laughs> we have some out, we move benches for uh, for the deal for Canada. Day. And you, you don't have um, fishing dock, so I just want everyone to know that <clears throat> I know that he's got that the uh, new bench was placed down at the corner with the sign on it, which is a much more appropriate bench for that sign. Looks great. But Kevin and his team also installed the bench at the fishing dock, and it is exactly where that committee wanted it, and it looks fantastic. The benches are amazing. Um, they're very beaky and uh, I think really fit in with the whole idea of Loggers Landing and the Cray Park. So thank well, you for well, that. It really differentiates us from other communities, like you know, with the metal and stuff like that. Like it's it's just it's just our like our culture, our way of life and stuff. Like just me, it just fits there. Yeah. Like it's just it's just nice every yeah. township you drive through. It's always like yeah. you, you go to a couple local clubs I drive through all the time, it's like it's the standard metal stuff like that, where like the downtown core looks great. Like yeah. I think it looks great. Yeah, it, looks, it also makes the sign look better. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, I can't wait to see them in Centennial Park. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> to move the other ones, get the new ones in. Yep. Uh, Centennial Park, uh, music park started. Um, anyways, and back it up a little bit. OPP, we've been reaching back and forth. They've been talking to us. So it's just one of those things. Uh, it's an ongoing investigation. So. And it's, it seems to be going on all over, I'm sure it's not just Ontario, but some really serious um, vandalism, I think in Ed Broadbent Park in the GTA, mm -hmm. like serious events. They were, uh, they did a ride on Monday night just in front of the museum. So I, it pulled me over and I, I'm like, please don't tell me there's vandalism at the museum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't, but there's obviously, it seems like there's greater presence now than before. It's good. Um, Touch wood, and it's it's subsided too. So, which is which is good. So, the presence is working. Yeah, you know, That's and good. they're doing walks through the park. So it's 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 mm -hmm. helping. It's helping. Um, moral at ten o'clock, or I got email. So yeah, so we're good to go on that. Third information booth season starting uh, this weekend um, in the village. Uh, the fountain's been put in. Oh, the tourist booth. Can we make sure that we get some Canada Day flyers for all the different events down to the tourist booth? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, it just occurred. Actually, Kevin, you could probably just pick them up in the office. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, sorry, can you change anything you need? Yeah. <laughs> it's been really hot in here. Oh. <laughs> Legion Field, uh, it's like soccer and ball. It's full, like no things operating, so it's good. Uh, this week we have a, a tournament up there on uh, on Saturday, so an adult tournament, so which is which is good. Uh, it's the uh, shape structure. Uh, Brian's hoping I was talking. He's hoping it started in July uh, or June, kind of do. It's, so it, right now it's probably a good thing not to be around there because we've had the schools going up and using the spot pad. So it's uh both schools are utilizing it, so it's busy around there and there's yeah lots of little ones running around. So I uh I just signed the deposit check for the materials mm -hmm. okay in the office. Uh Lake Clear, we'll look at the market out. Hopefully this week first it looks like a good one. <laughs> nice and one. Um all terms we're just starting to work on it. Uh, it's uh, Friday, July 21st, uh, 1 p.m. shotgun start. So hopefully we have a, a good turnout and a good day for it. Outside of that, that's pretty much my report. Uh, unless council has any questions or? Uh, no, I just, about the Canada flags, <clears throat> all the Canada flags will be looked at 
before Canada Day to make sure if they need to be switched out, they get switched out. We're hopefully going to do that tomorrow. I was talking to Ronnie Ben uh, yesterday, so uh, if you know, Ronnie's not able, we'll have to reach out and make it happen. Yes, yeah, because some of them are really tattered. Yeah. No, I and that's they should never be tattered. Yeah. Nor nor should our flag or the Ontario flag, but mm -hmm. for Canada Day, I mean you because they're so vibrant, you really do notice when they're faded out. I find like thanks for the museum ones as well. I find that the museum they're always wrapped around the pole. If like, I know they, I, they go with the wind, but it's always like that. Same with that the arena. Yeah, how do you, is there any solution to that? I mean can you wait them? Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work. It could rip them too. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. It's 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 one of those yeah, because you can't even see it, right? Because they're just wrapped around all the time. Like a smarter design would be a flagpole with a like something to or straight up. Or, or just, straight up. Yeah, send a painter's pole at 25 feet long and just poke her up. And <laughs> and go. That's high at the museum. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> 45 feet. Get her done. You can. I don't know okay, thank you. Here. Yeah, <laughs> I heard Brent. I heard him offering too. Says, I did too. Everybody heard that. Yeah. You can get a flag with a with a, a carbon rod or something in the top of it, so it's always erect. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she made me laugh. You made me laugh. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I don't know if you can add it to a, a flag we already have or you have to buy that pressing. Yeah. That might be a consideration for the next time. Yeah. Flag, you can get a flag that has a, has a support. We're going to talk about that at the museum board meeting, but it's something that you can actually see them. Just I know. Again. It has to be just the way the wind is blowing or something. I don't know, but well, it's, it's all, always crazy, wrapped. right? They're always wrapped. Yeah. yeah. But, and the ones at the arena are as yeah, well. It's, yeah. And you can have, you move them, straighten them out within a half an hour, they're all twisted. Yeah, out. and the tourist food. Yeah. That's... Perhaps the museum away from the wall is like a, is like a wind tunnel that may get, because the wind always travels out along the river. And it may catch in there and just yeah. around. But, I think for the museum, we could probably just do one, you know, standing up and. I don't know. I'm not a flag expert, but we'll look into it. And that is. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, the only, the only question I had was mm -hmm. for uh, what can we do for our ball of diamonds so that for the pitching mound? Because I thought, Kevin, was that in our budget this year? Or? We, we uh, the one group does have a pitching mound. We do have a pitching mound. Yeah. And we it's the it different the ages that's, that it makes it difficult. I guess that because it's the distance. Yeah, it's yeah, just the di different levels. So then is there anything that we could do for next year so that they don't have to go to Pembroke to play baseball? Well, actually, we have a group, uh, Little League from Eganville. Yeah. The majority of the kids are from town. Yep. And they're doing all our practices in Eganville. But the, but the games they're playing. The games are, play. a lot of the games are playing are being played. In so then how can, what do we have to do or feel to make it the games be here for next year? Is that something that maybe right. you could talk to Terry about or potentially? Or? Well, it's, it's kind of a different group. Oh, okay. some different organizations there. It's up a lot of valley, uh, small. I was valley. just curious because all the games, like for all the areas, they're all being played generally up in Pembroke. Yeah. I feel like they're, 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 I was just, it's just, it. we replaced the one pitching to try to get more, be more adequate for our area. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather them be able to play home games here and have other teams come to the area. So all my, all my ask is, what do we have to reach out to these organizations and just see what we have to do to make it adequate for them to have games here or four games here? Because I, they're I, all going to Pembroke. I, I don't think there's really any issue with other than scheduling. Because I thought I thought it was or we had to add additional pitching mounts for the other age group. That, that's correct. The, yeah, it's different. Like it's just a, a like, the, that's, we, Yeah, that's all. I was more yeah. curious at just try to track them to actually be able to like. If we have an area team from the area to have all the games, yeah, is all I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't foresee an issue. Uh, I think it's more of a scheduling, and I don't know why. Okay, but that home games here. Yeah, be like, some. Yeah. yeah, be some of the parents. What they're saying is there's it was something to do with how we're pitching, like mounds are set up. Yeah. So then I was just well, I just want to know for next year to try to make ourselves so everything proper. Yeah, that's all. No, no. I thought that was for the older group too. I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. The little group that's using them right now is uh, the 12 year olds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Group, so. yeah. yeah, just bring it to a future meeting. It's yeah, not for next year's problem, but 
like nice. reach out to the uh to the organization and just say could we have some home games like you know we're doing practices here we'll or what right. we have to do because like we want to put more money eventually and you can feel so it doesn't kind of you don't want to keep the client like it declining mm -hmm. realistically so i'd rather get more kids up there and then we have more of a reason to put more money towards it right, right. right. so that's it for me Ready to go? Yep. Um, so just a few highlights from the balance sheet and the income statement. I'll start with the balance sheet quickly. Um, so our cash on hand position is, is good at this time. Um, penalty owing on outstanding tax arrears is slightly higher than last year by $7,700. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the other things in this report are not updated till year end, like the assets category. So if you skip to the bottom of page three, our accounts receivable, Currently up about 40,000 owing from the province, but that'll be coming in hopefully soon. Um, over on the page four, our loans and debts have increased, but that was all investments in capital assets at the end of last year. That's really it for that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then also a few just a few quick highlights on the income statement. The income statement is as of May 31st as well um, so taxation revenue we have not built we have not done the billing yet for the 2023 taxes that will be done in august we have received our own the ontario municipal partnership fund payment as well as the ocif the ontario community infrastructure fund we've received the third of six payments over on page two, our CBO revenue is good so far for 2023. It's up about $34,000 compared to the same period from last year. And then admin revenue, interest at bank is very good. On May 30th, we made over $10,000 in interest for the month of May. So we're up $35,000 compared to the same period last year. So it's very good. Over on to page three, <clears throat> arena ice rentals. Revenue is up 15,000 compared to the same period for 2022. The COVID has sort of ended and you can see the rentals are now picking back up. On to page four, same with all rentals and bar sales. The revenue is also up $9,300 compared to the same period of 2022. Uh, page four, fire fire wages pay will be reflected in the next one you see because the, the pay for the firefighters will be was down in June. And then flip to page seven, administration and roads are looking good. And then pages nine to thirteen is waste sites. They're also looking good at this time. And if we skip over. Page 15, there was $12,000 budgeted uh, for our twin program for this summer. As you're aware, we have had no luck in hiring qualified swim program instructors to run the swim program this year. So we are looking for staff direction to negotiate with the city of Pembroke to use these budgeted funds to pay for the non-resident fee for PD residents okay. using the Kinsman pool for their swimming lessons. Mm -hmm. So we would pay the, the user fees. So. I don't see an, an option. Again, I mean, the shortage <laughs> of lifeguards and swim instructors, it is across the board. It's not just us. The province just recently reduced the age um, from 16 to 15, and they still don't have enough lifeguards and swim instructors. I'm assuming Nog doesn't have any either. No. <clears throat> I, you're just not getting involved. I know. I, I think I, I personally think it's the it. only way to go. I mean, swimming is a life skill that I believe is 
very necessary. And if if we can't provide it, I certainly think that it uh, it's right for us to help other residents that really want their kids in these swim programs. I don't know what has happened, but I suspect that maybe mm -hmm. these teenagers can make more money doing something else rather than on the swim programs now. I think that I think that just I don't know, it's my perspective with kids, the desire to swim in lessons has, has kind of gone away, you know, but that could just be my perception. The other thing is, I mean, I I remember I I'm gonna age myself here because I'm sure these aren't the names of them anymore, but my NLS and my Red Cross and my I yep. like it was a lot of work and I a lot of time. It. So maybe it's just that I mean I would swim during the winter and get my qualifications to lifeguard or teach in the summer. And maybe that's, that's a, a but, but, it's a problem because you would have to go to Pembroke every day to swim or three yeah. times a week. But city people can do that. Where do the rural people yeah. go swimming in the middle of the winter? Uh, exactly. It's not available. Exactly. So if we can get direction to do that, um, like, could we reimburse if there's kids or if there's uh, people who took the instructor course over the winter at Pembroke? Could we reimburse if they bring in their receipt? Could we reimburse them as well the ninety-five dollar um, user fee outside, like non-resident user fee, and then continue to uh, negotiate with Pembroke for the rest of the year as well, so that everyone that's taking swimming lessons, at least it's not costing them more. I think it's fifty-five dollars for swimming lessons or something, and it's ninety-five dollars non-resident fee. So I'm fine with that. Does anybody? I'd like to add the possibility of perhaps offering two scholarships for people to become like take the lifeguarding course. I assume they would do that in Pembroke as well. Yes. So we could offer to pay for the tuition and maybe a little honorarium and might attract and with with the proviso that they return service for us in the summer. Yeah. The nice idea is it is it possible to do that? I don't know. I guess it's getting. Well, I think what Annette was saying is that if you get if you're doing your qualification from our area, then you could then we would end up reimbursing it. Is that all we said? So, training? so well, I what I was saying is that any swimming lessons, so mm -hmm. any any swimming lesson that people were taking, uh, retroactively retroactively to January first, we had the, for the budget year. Uh, we have twelve thousand dollars. We would reimburse the ninety-five non-resident fee for all of those yeah. courses. Uh, but the, if you wanted to also do not just swimming lessons, but a scholarship, um, you know, we could offer that as well for for a couple of people. Or I don't. So know. what? So how? I guess I'm just trying to round one. Um, how how would that be applied if like uh, so like a lake group, for example, went out of our township and got lessons on a lake? Like, would that be reimbursed or it's just through the Pembroke? Continue? Yeah, so we haven't been able to find anybody yeah. to do lessons on the lake. Mm -hmm. The problem, we haven't been able to find any instructors. So Pembroke has instructors. Mm -hmm. They are doing uh, programs right now mm -hmm. and they did all winter. Uh, some of our residents have participated. Like I know one of our residents didn't go through for their bra, I don't know, the, the Bronx Cross, mm -hmm. the Bronx, uh, mm -hmm. Bronx Cross. Mm -hmm. Um, and so did complete that, but paid the $95 on resident fee. Uh, we also have other kids who have signed up for uh, the the uh, the lessons that are going on over the next eight weeks, and they've all paid 55 for the lessons plus the $95 on resident. So I'm just saying for BV residents, because we, we've been unable to hire someone, ideally we'd hire somebody to put lessons on here. We can't, we haven't been able to find that person can we at least assist our residents? They're already having to drive to Pembroke and, and pay for the lessons there. But this is sort of a, uh, you know, if that was stopping you from taking, like, what we want is our kids to learn to swim. So if that was preventing you from, from sending your kids for swimming lessons, like if that was what was, what was causing you to, to not send them, um, you know, then, then we could get that waived so that it would just be the cost of the lessons and obviously fuel to get there and back. But um, it's some support. If we wanted to do that and the scholarship, I mean, whatever direction council gives, we have twelve thousand uh, dollars that that we don't have allocated at the moment, and I don't see us allocating it unless somebody comes out of the woodwork to put on the lesson. So, the the other thing is, it is far easier to teach kids how to swim in a pool rather than a lake or a lake. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Way easier. Yeah. And even the lifeguarding is so, I mean, I, I lifeguarded at pools, lakes, rivers, you name it. And I should have just kept my NLS. Sure. I, I could have had a full-time job here in the summer. But um, I think 
for those that have taken all their credentials, they want to work in a pool because it's, it, number one, it's year round, right? You can teach in the lifeguard on weekends after school, what have you. But the other thing is, it's just an easier environment, especially if you're teaching mums and tots. Like that's, and that's that's where you want to get them, right? When they're little, really little. I, I mean, we can try a scholar. I, we can try a scholarship, but again, I think it's onerous if you want to take your credentials over the week uh, over the winter. You've got to get yourself to a Renfrew County pool, whether it be Pembroke or Petawawa, um, a lot. So when, when we advertise for this role, is it targeted to youth or is it just anyone? Anybody, anyone? We, we, yeah. That's thinking of adults who, you know, even retired or whatever that have the credentials. But if we were already we're reaching very, them, it's fine. We were very challenged up at Camp Lutheran as well. Yeah. But we were lucky yeah. to get to up there. So, um, and we did have discussions with them on whether, because our camp runs Monday to Friday at noon. So we did have discussions whether Friday at noon they wanted to come in and just do a, one afternoon a week for the summer, but um, they've already worked with kids for, for five days that week, and, and, mm -hmm. and they weren't too keen to add on to that. Um, so one more, just you made me think of it, Frontier Trails always mm -hmm. offered swimming lessons, and that's not far from the I'm not sure if they have the horseback the riding. I don't know, but it's, it's close. I don't think it's so. see, because COVID kind of put a stop yeah. to, even, even at the pools, even people getting their credentials. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I'm happy to reach out to them as well. My kids I, did some, some lessons there. It's it's terrible. Mm -hmm. So our needs are twofold. Mm -hmm. If we want kids to be able to swim, we need a lifeguard at the beach. And then secondly, if we want to teach them to swim, we need an instructor. Mm -hmm. So, and both are problems for us, finding mm -hmm. either. Now we don't need a lifeguard if we post. <clears throat> so if you're on risk, there is no lifeguard on duty. Um, uh, but when you're doing swim instruction, then you're supposed to have a lifeguard. You have to have two people there no matter what. Yes. So generally it's a swim instructor and a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. So well, when we want to find a, a nurse to work in an underserviced area, we sometimes pay for their tuition or you know, help them from yep. school and in return for a return of service. I can't see we have anything to lose by doing that. If we're, uh, depending if we're spending all of that money on paying for the kids to go and use their non-resident be to swim in Pembroke. Uh, but if there's some left over, we could probably find out how much the course is. But you'd have to have a little honorarium as well because there's gas money involved and things like that, I think. So maybe if we find out how much they are now, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to say how many years ago it was for me, but it was expensive even then. But yeah. the pay was really good. So... I think Maybe. it's important here, sorry to interrupt, because, oh, it is. because of the boating and stuff, it's important to learn on the lake versus a pool, because I, it's highly likely you're going to be on the lake. Therein lies the irony. Mm -hmm. So you're learning how to swim in a pool, but swimming in the lake totally is different very lake. different, totally. and swimming in a river with a current yep. is even more different. Mm -hmm. So like the bronze programs are $157, but the oh. non-residence fee is an additional $139. Whoa. The uh, LLS is 194, uh, but it's an additional resident non-residence fee of 172. The leaders is 169, additional non-residence fee of 150. The instructors LLS and RC Red Cross is 336 plus an additional 297 if you're not a resident in the city of Pembroke. Ooh, so that's up. <laughs> that's where I'm saying I'd like to even like yeah. so that there are uh, residents in Boulder Valley who are interested in taking these courses. Uh, you know, we have the $12,000 budgeted, so to benefit our residents to say, you're not going to have to pay any additional fees, or if you want to send your kids to swim oh. lessons for $55, you don't have to pay the additional $95 non -residents. Okay, and this solves the precedent-setting scholarship idea. So what we're doing, in essence, is paying the additional fee for them to become a lifeguard, which I think should come with something, mm -hmm. some sort of You've got to come back to Montreal Valley for two summers, what have you. Um, but I, I think that it solves that that gray area. Um, and if somebody wants to take those courses, fantastic. 
Is this a minimum wage position or higher? No, no. Okay. that's why I was asking just if that could be a deterrent. No, yeah, well. no, it's much higher. It so was higher even when I was doing it. But I don't want that to be the reason why our residents are not going, right? No, it makes sense. We have a, we have a 12 grand set aside for it in our budget, so utilize it for that purpose, mm -hmm. serving our the need and comply currently. I can't, so, yeah, and I don't want to be allocated yeah. because we all feel that this is an we important need. life skill. Yes, definitely. Right? So am I just reallocating it to any non-resident fees? And and what if somebody has taken the bronze cross like in January, February, March, and, and they come in here and they say, see, I've taken it, I got it in Pembroke. Am I going to reimburse from the whatever it is, the one thirty nine or whatever? I'd say probably not. Just for the reason I say that is because like they should be lifeguarding here. Oh, well, but they're not lifeguarding yet. They've only taken their first oh, step. Okay. So they've taken their bronze crop. They still have to take more. You have to take your NLS, which is yeah. national life saving, and uh, you used to have to take your bronze medallion as well. Yeah. So I don't know if that's I, still. I, I just don't know when you do? Yeah, you do. reimburse from the non-resident one thirty nine. Sounds looking very confused. Could bronze medallion be non? No, but only bronze cross. Maybe, maybe yeah. they've. Um, uh, that's yeah. new then. We are talking yeah. 40 years ago. Keegan did his brother. So pretty program. much you're, so anything this year. We well, that's right. Anything sport. this year. Yeah, 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 that's so fine. you can prove just that you put your kid in, yeah. in swimming lessons or that you took a bronze cross or whatever you took. Yeah. Uh, then yeah, we used to do swimming lessons when our kids were younger. We, but then yeah. I think to John's point is what we should be doing is if we find that we have a resident that wants to go all the way. Mm -hmm. And wants to like or, or teach swimming here, more importantly, teach swimming. Yes. Then I think that over next winter, we put it out as a scholarship opportunity. As a, that we will pay the non resident fee because those are, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Right? Mm -hmm. So the actual amount of the course isn't, I mean, it's not too, too bad, but when you add in the non resident mm -hmm. for all the different courses they need, that's going to add up. Yeah. And yeah. We should let it go you on know, earlier enough in the in the season, early enough in the fall. Yeah. So that people are ready to take it in the morning. Or even now, they yeah. can they can take it over the summer if they want. want. Yeah. yeah. And it might encourage them if they did get their bronze cross, it might encourage them to go to the next step, knowing they've got reimbursed for this, and I'm going to get reimbursed wow. for that, and that might be enough. And they're going to have a job, step, right? And have a job. Yeah. 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 It's saleable because if we pay ninety five dollars times mm -hmm. ten kids, that's a thousand dollars. And if we had our own trained lifeguard slash instructor, which would probably cost somewhere in a thousand dollar range, it would be equal money spent and a good value for us. Um, Although then we get revenue. Um, and, then, uh, and we pay them, yeah. Yes. A fair wage. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I that would be my recommendation, guys. I don't know how you feel. I, yes, non residents or are so we for 2023, we are going to pay the non resident fee. For Bonshire Valley kids who are willing to get to Pembroke and and want to swim and have to use out of out of Miss Valley facility for the whole year from January first to December. So right, yeah. so yeah. calendar. So the twelve thousand is utilized. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And then if I if I could ask if Annette or Sandra could provide us the cost from someone to train as a lifeguard mm -hmm. and as a swimming instructor, that gives us something to to work with and so for the beginning of school year we might be able to say advertise in the high schools that here's a uh, here's an opportunity for you we'll we'll pay for your training if you'll give us return of service yes we, we um, won't commit to that right now but we could get the that numbers. Be next year's budget but yeah. i would go so far as to say if somebody came in with their receipt for their bronze cross and we were reimbursing you say to them you know if you're considering Going further, we will subsidize those non-resident costs. If we because still, if we still have funds available, that's what, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I mean, uh, thinking ahead, do we have our own homegrown um, swim instructor and lifeguard for next summer? It's incentive. I mean, you advertise this at Opiongo. It's incentive to yeah. want to do it. We get ready for the next years. You know? Yeah. And they're, gonna they're, try something. they're local, the better chance of them working around here than, and like you said, they might still want to go work at a pool. I can't do anything about that. But what Tracy said is so, like, it, it is ironic that we have so many rivers and lakes, yes. but yes. you're learning in a pool, which is a very different environment. Yeah. yeah. 
very controlled environment. It's not raining or storms. <laughs> no, <laughs> in a pool. Because I will tell you, reach through a rogo toe is great in a pool, not so good in a lake. Yeah. See what I remember? Yeah. Keep it all up here. Because they drill it into and you. And these young people, do. <laughs> when they get their training, they're undertaking a risk behavior for us too, because to become a lifeguard, it's part of the course, but but we, we have to make sure our, our pools and our equipment and our throw ropes and things are all there. It's all part of getting kids in the water, really. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So is that all right if we ask Annette or Sandra to provide the cost for the, the path for the two things to instruct and lifeguard? And then we'll come up with something. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can find ways to other ways to sweeten the pot or and and get some kids interested. Kids, I call them, but they'll be they could be up to 20, 21 years old. Somebody who wants a nice 54 job. Yeah. yeah, anyone who's fit and able to do it and can be tested to prove. Okay, so. well, that's where I fall down on the fitness part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good thing. Okay. Thank you. Yay. Good conversation. But when, I mean, when I throw on CV24 and even Toronto pools, they have to stagger when they're open because they yeah. don't have enough staff. Yeah. It's like and, Tim Hortons. <laughs> and some pools are actually closed, like even on weekends. But there are some that, like, you can swim at this pool from nine till two, and you can swim at this pool from three until eight. And then, I mean, that that's something else. Well, it's showing you there's a lack of interest. Oh, yeah. That's more, or, or it's the cost. Not good the fees. Not yeah, it's everywhere across the but globe. But those Canada, jobs probably. were so competitive when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, they were so competitive. Good jobs. Oh, yes, they were. And you, you like. Well, they're all, they also look very good on a resume, though, for a lot yeah. of people in the medical industry. Yes. Like most, or just like, leadership, lot, like, like my lifeguard growing up, uh, she's yeah. a doctor, not a pediatrician. So the thing is, she, the whole, she'll be honest, and the only reason she did it was because it looked great on her resume. Mm -hmm. now, there's a, now there's a lot more availabilities because a lot more people have vehicles, you can drive places. And being a lifeguard is a hard job. Yeah. Very responsible. Sometimes. I agree. <laughs> Depends who <laughs> it like is. Only uh, if there's an accident. Well, that's the thing. Right? He used a lot of zinc on his nose. Yeah. Um, no, I, but they, the, the pay was great. Yeah. Um, but it was actually kind of a rewarding job, too. Can we tell people the pay? Or is that, that's posted, I'm guessing, right? The pay? Yes, we, we yeah, because we upped it again. And yeah. What is, can I ask what it is? Or is that on okay? I forget what we eventually upped it to, but yeah, it was pretty substantial. So, yeah. like more than 25? I don't think it was more no, than it wasn't that much. It was, I'm just going to do some outreach, so right, yeah. with the kids. But yeah, so it's a shame. It really is. And you're right, Brent. It looked great on a resume yeah, because what you also get when you're a lifeguard is you know first aid, you know CPR, you know how to use. Uh, even now, they teach them how to use AEDs. That I mean. There are other life skills that come along with that. Well, it's crisis. It's, it teaches crisis at a young age, which a lot of people are exposed to, right? Yeah. All right, perfect, Mark. Keep us going. Okay. Keep you telling you all done. Um, other than there's also there was an impact. Yeah. I just I just had um that wasn't a typo. The eighteen dollars. No. Okay. So I, I believe. It's only a couple days. Okay, so <laughs> the reason I ask is that it was like 18 and then 183, and I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I should have phoned you about that. I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then? Okay, so um, insurance renewal is going to be completed by the July 2nd deadline. Um, and I, I invited our broker to present an overview of the policy on July 11th. Just we have too many council members here. And if you're interested in insurance, it's exciting stuff, but we'll, we, won't, we, won't, we won't have them on for too long. Uh, Riveting information. <laughs> we do have to also July 11th bring forward a uh, an use policy because we do have some youth programming like with the dance and things like that going on. And we didn't have one specifically for uh, the, that type of programming for vulnerable people and uh, and volunteers mm -hmm. and sort of how that process would, would flow. So I do have that ready to go. Our insurers just looking it over to make sure it covers all of our, 
our risks. So that will be coming forward on July 11th as well. Um, accessibility for Ontarians with disabilities. Uh, we they did send me an audit, and uh, according to the other CAOs that were at the conference with me, I don't know if there was anybody who didn't get one. I felt special, apparently not. So I did get all the documentation and everything <laughs> in from that they needed. They had one question back to me, um, and I answered it. And so I haven't heard back. So I think we're we're good to go there. Um, and it had to do with the Curran Club. So uh, I didn't report it as new or redeveloped property because really the, con the construction there was meant to make the building more accessible. So it wasn't really a redevelopment. It wasn't a reconstruction, but I did uh, I did tell them that. So, I, you know, that was the only question that they had. <laughs> County of Renfrew um, is proposing a fee for the pre-consultations. Right now they do that uh, free of charge. So that is going to county council at the end of the month. I don't know whether it will pass or not pass, but if it does pass um, for things like consent or or other things that are under the county authority to approve, they will be charging the pre-consultation fee, collecting it, and if the person goes forward with a consent or subdivision of whichever application, then they will be reducing that fee and moving forward with that. Now, uh, the county is also our planners because we don't have a planner in house. So if someone is uh, asking for a pre-consultation on a minor variance, on any uh, a zoning bylaw, anything that is under our authority, they will need to pay the two, well, they don't need to. The county will be charging us that fee. So the question then is uh, whether we put a process in place that if someone submits a pre-consultation, because it doesn't always come through our desk, to the county, do we want the county, if this passes, I realize I'm saying this ahead of time, uh, do we want the county to then send them in here to collect our money ahead of time uh, or or not? And uh, so if we do, we have to pass the bylaw as well. So, can we yeah. hold off on staff direction on this until this is ratified by county Absolutely. council? Absolutely. Um, and I, I just, uh, I'm gonna weigh in. I spoke out against this, um, I believe, and being somebody that had used the pre-consultation service. Um, I believe this allows people to check with the county before they go through some of the hoops that they have to go through for severances, et cetera. Um, you know, our, the severance that we did very recently, um, you know, the pre-consultation just told us, uh, don't go deep because you do have a bit of a runoff from your, from your pond, which, you know, can be construed as a wetland. It is not, it's just runoff, but we kept the, the uh, property long to the road uh, as opposed to deep. And yeah, and I knew that we didn't, that we weren't in danger of having uh, endangered species, species at risk, et cetera. Um, I believe that, I know it's only $200, but it's $200. And so I spoke out against it as did a lot of the other smaller municipalities. Um, anyway, the discussion is coming on next Wednesday. So after that, I think maybe I can bring, and you can bring more information. Yeah. Um, you know, severing is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. um, the severance cost of the, at the county level is, it's reasonable, um, but then you have to pay a lawyer and you have to pay the surveyor and and it it gets expensive and this was a this was one service that i thought you know i get that it's not free we all pay into this service as taxpayers however i thought that it was a really good um uh, consultation to have where people weren't going down the whole rabbit hole and then finding out no you can't do that yeah and I, I agree with you because I was going to do a severance and I found out I had to do an archaeological survey. There yeah. you go. Great example, and, Merv. Yeah. And we could reimburse too on our because we have our own fees for zoning or minor variance. So if if the county chooses to go forward with it, then um, if we want people to pay it here first, so we don't pay directly to the county, if they go forward with their minor variance or go forward with their zoning bylaw amendment, then that's where we could also reimburse off of off of our fees. Uh, if if we so chose, although at that point it's really the county benefiting, not us. So, exactly. Um, so just just some 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 thoughts at that point. And I did ask Bruce how many pre consultations we have a year because they don't they don't usually track them because they're not attached to an application. 
but uh, he thought that they could uh, look that up for us. So just to get an idea of how much money it is, you know, is it is it two thousand dollars? Is it is there ten a year, or is it a lot more? So just I'll have that information. If county, county doesn't pass it, then we don't need to have the discussion yeah, again. So just a heads up. Yeah. Yeah. So when uh, if a resident had a property that might need a severance, might need a survey, they're different surveys. They sit with Anne McVean, mm -hmm. first of all, and that's not a chart. They don't that's get charged for that. No, that's our, no, our no. service. And then and she helps them to say, we have to do this, this, and this, and you do it in this order because if you find out the door is locked here, there's no sense spending more money. Okay. So but, she's a good service. Yeah, absolutely. But that sometimes now will count as pre consultation. So hold on. Yeah. All has not been discussed yeah because it was discussed at development of property but it has not been fully discussed uh by county council yeah. yeah so i would be resistant to having them think that that's a free service and then later on to well actually we're gonna you're gonna have to back pay for that so and that's a question that. that needs to be asked because yeah. there are others of us that are using not a lot but you're absolutely correct yeah <laughs> So, and okay. again, maybe two hundred dollars is not a make or break, and it, you know maybe it wouldn't have been to Dave and I, but to others, yes, it would. Well, I think it, and it's I, severance I, is a lot of work. I think I think it is for a lot of like a lot of people. I honest. know. Yeah. Like just to set the like the wheel in motion because eventually that two hundred dollars you have to do a lot of additional things to it. But the thing is, is all of our property taxes all pays for the service that we're getting right now. So yeah, the thing is, is like why would like I, I agree? We'll wait till it, if it is if it's not ratified or is ratified, then we can react accordingly. But to me, it makes no sense. Wait till July 11th. I will have less bureaucracy. It's usually good. Yeah. So I know. Okay. Um, and uh, Sandra and I were away. Uh, we went to the 85th uh, conference of the Association of Municipal Managers, Clerks, and Treasurers of Ontario. Uh, so we attended a lot of different sessions. There was freedom of information requests, investing in municipalities, municipal law updates, succession planning, and uh, I also presented, moderated, and uh, was elected chair and president's alternate for the ethics committee for the association. So uh, it was a great, great conference, uh, a lot of learning going on, a lot of networking going on. Like I said, that's where I found out that, oh, this access, everyone was like, who's doing what about the accessibility on? I asked for extension. Did you ask for the extension? So anyways, just uh, it's interesting to know what, what everybody else is uh, sort of in the same boat as far as we're concerned. Well, congrats um, on being so. elected to yet another position. Don't ever take me on about the stuff I do. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I think you're worse than me. Sure, I'll do that. <laughs> and I just wanted to say thank you uh, to new council and, and to, for allowing, you know, ongoing professional development for the staff because it really does assist us in doing our jobs the best that we can. Um, but, you know, I know that uh, resources are tight, so we appreciate uh, the ongoing support. Well, if you ever want to be a lifeguard, we can. <laughs> in addition. <laughs> yeah. So then Dana's report, uh, we have the uh, the planning and zoning and community development. So we did a planning meeting coming up today. Um, and uh, we still are having the planners come in and meet with uh, different people regarding their applications. So that's going well. Maybe we'll have a lot more coming in now that it could be charged. So Ooh. I hope solid the next couple of months. We um, do we have any pre booked right now? Like, are we, we privy yeah, to we this? Do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next one is uh, July the 4th. Okay. The next time that Anne is in, and then August 4th, the 5th, and then October. And then, October, and then so. do we do we have privy to like the how much? People utilizing your service, like when we're in here, like are we do we have a schedule of what? Yeah, sure, I can tell you that. Like it's pretty. She's fully booked. She's usually oh, okay. fully no, booked. No, which is good. Yeah, every time she's here, so I think she has space for uh, maybe six, six at least six yeah, each time she's here, maybe more. Uh, and I would say every time she's here, there's probably at least that. Because that's built into her agreement, like yeah, yes, that's right, and that's stuff. Right. So like, yeah. yeah so she'll good. be in the kitchen with some with a client, and they'll be there will literally be other re residents waiting in line. Mm -hmm. Like she's, yeah. no, but like, it's but a the very thing, popular the, service. No, but what I'm saying, like uh, the thing is, is we'll see what, what the outcome is of the other decision. Mm -hmm. But eventually when we go to renegotiate with it, we can ask what is the cost of additional days of service? 
Oh yeah. Like that's like that's what I'm saying is this like because I I don't think people paying for it makes any sense Mm -hmm. to me. But we can look at it as like you know what what would it cost for one additional day per month? I should have actually asked that. Is everybody on board that Bonnetshire Valley is not in favor of charging for pre consultation? Yeah. Uh, Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I kind of went out on my own limb. There. What is what is nice is the fact that it's being used. I yeah. know it's being used, and and it wasn't. I mean, it was a pilot project. Yeah. I mean, there was no promise that it was going to get the uptake that it did. So it's really incredible. Yeah. That, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's quieter in the winter. Uh, I can tell you yeah. that, but uh, it's been it's been very busy this spring. And it was busy last fall, but you know. And then it's is it all um, just our ratepayers come here? Or do yeah. other municipalities no. come in as well? No. Be, just because we are central, so in the winter time, if we are slow, then it'd be. Yeah. Good. yeah. No, at this. That's point, so it's funny you ask that. I asked Anne that the last time she was here. Well, just because we are we are central. And, and like, she said no. She said yeah. that this is a service that we agreed to with the county of Renfrew. She is here for Bonnachie Valley mm-hmm. people. And I sh- I probably should have told you guys that it only occurred to me the last time she was here because she was meeting with somebody and somebody was standing here waiting for her. Mm-hmm. And I thought, boy, if that's, uh, mm-hmm. if she's getting lineups, yeah. then that's pretty incredible. But yeah, yeah no, it's, well, we it's, want our, you it's our agreement with the county. Yeah. Yes, so. and I know McNabb, Brayside, and Mass and Brownlee use it as well. Yeah. There's probably others, but those are the two that I know of that, that also she goes, I don't know if it's Anne, but some of those ones. Are. So, but yeah. others have their own planners as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we might, we might have to prepare for this service to be more in demand from our own residents because now, you know, when a building lot has gone from, say, $40,000 to $90,000, uh, she answers questions even before a lot is purchased that might that might determine whether you can build or you can't build within your, your plans. Yeah. Well, generally, once you've severed, all the conditions have been met, right? So you know if you need an archaeological dig, you know if you need somebody to come out and find out if there are whippoorwills in your yard you all of that is done prior to your severance severance. so now if somebody wants to buy that 2.75 acres from dave and i um it's ready to go all they need now are minimum maintenance standards for where they build where their septic goes where their well goes um but it's yeah all of those things have been done which is why merv and your example was so good Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have any conditions to meet, but Merv would have. Yeah. 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 And it could have been very costly. But, yeah, but it doesn't. Oh, I don't want to bring my personal thing in, but I've got almost a mile of lakefront. Can you imagine if I have to do an archaeological survey of that mile of lakefront? The survey will cost more than the value of the property. Yeah. Yeah, a mile. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then of course we have the uh, the public meeting coming. Uh, this evening at 525. The community development report. So we have our youth, youth dance was held uh, May, May 19th at the Legion. So 125 youth were in attendance and uh, we're working towards getting the next newsletter out. I was speaking with Sarah as well. She's working on a little a survey, just 10 questions for community members to see, you know, what kind of activities or events uh, that they're interested in attending or have attended in the past. Um, and uh, she did also attend the Egan Bone Area Community Development Group meeting. Uh, earlier this uh, this month. Is there any way of sending a note to the Foymount residents about this playground structure? I don't think we could get them all out there. No. Yeah. And I don't well, on Facebook, to Facebook, be honest. Facebook, probably, yeah. They have a pretty active Facebook. I, and I've been in contact with mm-hmm. quite a few of the parents. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just been, I know it's been very frustrating for Kevin. <laughs> um, but it's very frustrating. You know, we've been promising them this for two years yeah. through no fault of our own, it took 15 yeah. months to get. And then yeah. they shipped it, without legs. then shipped it without the yeah. the ground yeah. stuff, which is yeah. It, Couldn't have shipped it without a swing, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Ship it without the things that go into the ground. Yeah, well, that's how construction's yeah. been for the last 30 yeah. years. Yeah. So how you understand the pain. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, Bren, do you need a treat? No, I don't. <laughs> Diet. So music in the park. Uh, so it started on June the 9th. So we have uh, some great performers coming forward. 
uh, over the next uh, this month. I guess half of them are already done. And um, Vulture's Author Festival as well. So July 10th, July 27th, 24th, and 31st. So though that's been advertised very well. And also marriage licenses. So marriages continue to happen. Uh, so nine so far in 2023. So they've slowed down a little bit. Lots, lots of them are happening through the pandemic. Well, because um, Renfrew offers it now, because that would cut into a lot of our services. What it on? They offered it before the pandemic. We were the only ones giving them out during the pandemic. Yeah, so yeah. we were getting a lot more here, but we, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So people were coming yeah, from we had like everywhere. Six, we had like 68 the one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was it, was pretty, uh, it was pretty wild. Yeah. So um, and I think we were also um <laughs> under like our fee was much lower, and now I think we're the same as rent. So it's possible some of the rent residents will choose to, to stay in rent as opposed to come here. But, it's not uh, cheaper if you have to drive from Toronto to Eganville to get your marriage yeah, license. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we well, they can stay them. here, so there's staycation, right? That's right. <laughs> we, we process nice tax write off. There you go. Yeah, we process them in a very timely manner. I was told somebody came in and the the wait uh, at Renfrew was longer than at Vulture Valley, so they may still. Mm -hmm. be a marketing ploy there, right? No, we did. We said the city of love. I think is what we talked. Yeah, about. we did. Yes, yeah. yeah. love. Nice big banner. Yeah. yeah. Say we have a sign that says we have sexy fish. Two for one. <laughs> So we still got the, the summer of the day camp. So camp today is going well. We've got the uh, the free the cooking class over at uh, in, in the Eagles Nest that's coming as well. So there's some opportunities for the kids to yes. participate. Uh, we did uh, reach back out and talk to Heather Davidson about putting on a program at the youth building. Uh, we talked about just getting reimbursed for cleaning costs. So I don't know if that's going to take off or not. Mm -hmm. um, and Canada Day, Canada Day, Canada Day, Canada Day. That's that's really. Uh, that's what staff is working on uh, now, and there's lots of events, and not just through us, but through the museum, through uh, you know the art in the afternoon, mm -hmm. as you guys have talked about. So there's a lot going on uh, in Vulture Valley for Canada Day, and uh, it's all there. Again, I think it's been advertised very, very well, so I won't mm -hmm. go through it all, but uh, but I think it's going to be a great day. Looks good. Yeah, really good. I'm anyway. excited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After years and I, years, I guess we wait to hear about fireworks, right? Um, so that's the only, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the only downer. Uh, is uh, we are not making any calls yet. We are watching and waiting. Uh, but yeah, we need some rain. So uh, if we could get a few days of rain, we need about four. Maybe we could get three even. Um, you know that might change things on on our side. But at this point. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't look good if things continue the way they are. Can, can we get an exception? Yeah. Bonesure Lodge was able to get an exception. Not not I, I saw that. I <laughs> smelled yeah, it. I saw that too. Bonfire. And, and bonfire. I, I'll tell you um, my my challenge with it, um, and I get that it's part of their experience mm -hmm. going to the lodge. I think my problem with it is though, we are going to get phone calls. How come they can do it and not me? Now they do under MNRF rules. <laughs> they are allowed to apply for the exception. Um, I yeah, but for fireworks, no, because that's our bylaw. And and so. either way, it's up to the fire chief. So regardless of what MNR says, um, our fire chief will decide what's safe and what's not safe. Not for the lodge. Uh, yes, like we could, we can still increase the like. We can't go, how do I say this? We can't over supersede the province. Uh, okay. If the province says you can't burn, you can't burn. But if the province says you can burn, as a local municipality, as our fire chief, we can say, yeah, the province is saying you can burn, but we don't think, we, we looking at local conditions, don't believe that it's safe and we can put on a ban. So um, at this point, it is provincial. Um, the ban is provincial right now, but, and yes, we can get an exception through the province. We can't supersede them. But uh, you're right, we could ask for an exception for the fireworks. Um, but that we could also, even if, if it gets lifted, if it doesn't seem safe, you know, we still could say we're not doing it. God, we you know what I mean? Like we don't, we don't have to, just because someone else says it's safe, if we don't feel it's safe, we don't have to, we don't but, have to do it. But if MNRF <laughs> says that they can have a bonfire, we are we cannot supersede that ever. We it's, could have we could have a municipal fire ban on. Well, we do have a municipal fire. I mean, well, we do, but yeah, yes. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if even if the provincial, even if the province didn't put on a ban, we can still have a ban. Oh, you know I see what you mean. But we can't all of a sudden say to Bonisher Lodge, "No, you can't have a bonfire." We can put in restrictions for sure because we, yeah, we we can still have our own bans. 
Well, we do have a bear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a nice we didn't complicate yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just make sure we can shoot some fireworks off. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, we're we're waiting to see uh, what the province does, and if the province lifts this the bans or opens up um, exceptions for fireworks, mm -hmm. then I would turn to the fire chief and say, "So, what do you think?" Are we, are we lifting ours as well? Just cross our fingers that we get like three days of rain. That would be great. That and would just be ideal. good rain. Yes. It can't be pummeling rain. Yes. It's got to be good rain. That would be ideal. <laughs> no, as of this morning, there's no rain in the forecast. I oh. Anyway, we, is there is there a date that council would like the decision uh, posted or made? I'm not saying it's within our, our purview, but if like, do you want us to announce it? I was kind of <laughs> thinking the Friday morning before. But uh, like I want to hold off as long as possible. Yeah. Um, how does council feel? Perfect. Yeah. Or can you, I'm sorry. Yeah. Who might yeah. Nope, that works. That works. Okay. Thank you. And then I would love to then say, okay, we're going to do them the August long weekend. But I, I think that we should leave it pending to see what the weather is going to look like okay. and then make some decisions. Yes. Okay, it's so pretty sad over the weekend when you're sitting around your campfire that you can't light. <laughs> you're just sitting there in a circle. Yeah. Yep. So the fire chief said we have now we may have a, a county fire advisor. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Does have he one now can he there. assist us in getting the making the right decision? Uh, you know, yes, five days yeah. before the first. Yeah, Maybe we absolutely. could direct uh, the fire chief to to get him because, as you say, when they have a province wide ban. Local conditions may allow us may may allow us to do a fireworks, whereas uh, driving can't. And so, so we are we are in a restricted fire zone right now by the province, but Niagara Falls is not, and um, Kingston is. I think it's Kingston. There are a lot of lake effects that, like when I was in Prince Edward County, it rained. It and I mean light rain almost the entire time I was there. So. Like conditions, you're absolutely right. Conditions are different, but we are in a provincial restricted zone right now. And our bylaw says that as long as we're in a fire ban municipally, we can't light fireworks. I also think it would be not a good example to set for those people that want to fire off fireworks in their backyard. That's that's my feeling. Yeah. And again, I don't think if we can't have them on the first, and I certainly hope we can, mm -hmm. if we can't have them on the first, I don't want to put out a new date until we see what conditions are like. Okay. This has been one wickedly dry. Explanation. I know, and it leaves the fire department in church too, but when are they going to order the fireworks? <laughs> they already did. Yeah. Oh, they already yeah. have. Yeah. We've got it. Yeah, we've got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And they can be stored until September if they have to be. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, okay. That's it for me, Mr. Chair. Good, good. Correspondence A. Anyone have any comments? None. Correspondence B. Anyone have any comments? No. Sure, down the. You want unfinished, Brent? Do you want to correspond and see? <laughs> no, I've already been let down enough uh, about correspond <laughs> so I, I know. I've actually dropped that. <laughs> you've, you've given up. I, I've okay. given up. Maybe for, maybe for uh, community uh, events for C. <laughs> you would have to table something from A or B. I attempted. Yeah, I attempted to table. He did. He did it a few months ago. He tried to table did you, something. Where did you table? Uh, I don't know. I, I'll go back in YouTube videos. Yeah, there's did. something to table to table something in it. So <clears throat> just to prove a point. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm up, Merv. Library yep. board. Perfect. Thank yep. you. Uh, so just uh, some good uh, upcoming events. So obviously, Annette touched on Authors Festival. So the exciting thing is, uh, so uh, July 10th we have Katie uh, Tallow coming. Uh, Daniel Beamish is coming July 17th. Um, Fiona King Foster is uh, July 24th. And then it's really nice. We uh, were able to rearrange some of the, the schedule and uh, Tim Cook's actually coming on July 31st as well. Uh, so it's a really diverse group coming this year and uh, we expect really large crowds as well. 
Um, and there's a lot of refreshments, everything like that. We have the seasons pass, everything. So just uh, hopefully we see some of you guys there. Uh, then there's also a unique uh, opportunity as well, just happening up at the senior center. Uh, so it's on July 30th. Uh, it's just, a, it's a play about, uh, it's called the Mod of Leaksdale. Uh, so it's just about Ellen Montgomery. Uh, so it's just a one, one woman show. Uh, so there's a, it's a, it's a, and there's a violinist that's going to be opening up and everything. So I uh, hopefully have around a hundred to 200 people there is our expectation. So um, okay. it'll be a really good, a good event and stuff. And it's in the senior center. Uh, so that is uh, on July 30th and that's, uh, it's $20 for admission. It's at 2 PM. So uh, Judy Sobe and a couple of uh, key members have been working on that for the last six months. And it's been a long process and that ties in really nicely with the event. Besides that, everything's going great. Uh, a lot of events are uh, happening, a lot of programming. Uh, so besides that, everything's good. And uh, some of the money's been getting spent on the one uh, grant that they receive. So they have the kid, if you go into the library, they have the uh, kids activity play table that's there as well and stuff. So it's pretty cool. It's an electronic table that uh, all kids can play with and stuff. Even adults you can go to and there's a bunch of games and everything. I'm here. So, no game searching. It's just a lot of uh, interface and stuff. So it's pretty neat. And same as all like the computers are all updated and uh, iPad purchase and things like that. So besides that, everything's good. So any questions, just send me an email anytime. Perfect. Good. Okay. Uh, so we did receive an invitation from Lake Clear Property uh, for an event on July 15th at Rio from 437. It is uh, twenty dollars per person. I didn't know if um, council was going to attend or not, but I thought I'd bring it up. Our truth and reconciliation, three sisters garden. Um, we'll have a soft opening tomorrow at ten a.m. and there's a non-denominational event at four p.m. Four, four four okay, perfect. Um, and it, they put so much work into it. I really do encourage any of you that can be there. Um, tomorrow, the seniors AGM is at the Echo Center at one o'clock, and today, from four thirty to either six or seven, is the Training and Learning Center's AGM. And I was thinking, if we were out of here by four thirty, we could all go over and just say a huge thank you. Um, I will be reporting um about a meeting I had with the. Ministry of Transportation regarding the, the service Ontario that's in that building. And I have uh, reached out to Sue Rupert, um, but I, I think it'd be really nice for all they do for our community if we're done in time. I know that that doesn't leave us much time to get back here or get to our homes to do uh, later this afternoon, but uh, I think it'd be a really nice thing to go and say hi. It's 4.30, you said? Yeah. I know you have a really long commute, and so does John and Brent. But I'll go. At the end of the meeting, then we'll go over. Okay. Anyway, so it uh, looks like that's it, except for the closed session. Yeah. Well, our next meeting date is July 11th. Yeah. Um, we don't have media here. Yeah, we've got to close. Can we take five before we go into sure thing. Excellent. And you okay. see, you shouldn't over prepare because I got everything ready here. And what happened when I started? I picked up tonight's agenda. <laughs> um, so, so there's one meeting in July, correct? Yes, and August. Okay.
Ready. Okay, ready to go. Let the meeting proceed in closed session in accordance with the Municipal Act 2001, Section 239.2, to deal with matters as indicated below. Closed session. Anyone have a declaration of interest? Oh, hang on. We got to go actually in the close. So, uh, labor relations, employee negotiation. Oh, yes, yeah, regarding, regarding labor relations or for employee negotiation. So, we just need a mover. Yeah, I'll move it. I'll okay. second.
Okay. Okay. Yep. Committee moves out of closed session to rise and report the committee meant to receive information regarding the hiring of an equipment operator and to approve the minutes of June 6, 2023 meeting. So that I'll move by. All in favor? Should it be hiring two equipment operators? No, we already hired one. Okay, that's done. Thank you. Good. All right. Um, yeah, oh, sorry. I'll, yeah. I'll move to adjourn. Move, move to adjourn. Perfect. Talk here at 520? No. It means you see me.